right hand of the Father. And the Bible also says that we are seated with Him in heavenly places. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Today, which is as we draw nearer to the close of the year, I want us to refresh ourselves on some things which we may already know or things which we need to know again. Apostle Paul says to speak the same thing to you. For me, it is not grievous. Hallelujah. So repetition has its place in preaching, in sermon, in the word of God, and in our living up to God's expectation. So today we want to look at a sermon that have captioned recipe for effective prayers. Recipe for effective prayers. Praise the name of the Lord. What did I say? like be as effectual as your flesh permits you. If you like be as fervent as your abracadabra can let you be, it is not going to avail anything. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Recipe for effective prayer life. First of all, what is a recipe? What is a recipe? What is a recipe? A recipe is a set of instructions together with the ingredients for preparing or making something. So a recipe is a set of instructions together with the ingredients for preparing or making something. If you understand that so far, say amen. amen. Let's take for example tea, which is a common thing. I don't want to go down the lane of cake because uh, that one is a bit little complicated for me. Tea. The recipe for tea has to include a set of instructions and has to include ingredients. So recipe is broadly made up of two parts. Instruction, ingredients. Say with me, instructions, ingredients. So the ingredients for tea will include a tea cup. It will include spoon. It will include tea bag, 
it will include water. It will include kettle to boil the water, whether it be electric or on a stove. Praise the name of the Lord. It will include milk if you are keen to have milk. It will include some form of sweetener if you like it, whether it be honey, whether it be sugar, or anything along those lines. So those are the ingredients for tea. Praise the name of the Lord. Now the instruction part of the recipe for tea will be put on the kettle to boil the water. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then when the water is boiled, pour the water in the cup. Put the tea back. Put the sugar. Put the milk. Use the teaspoon to stir the tea. Then you are good to go. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Be mindful that the content may be hot. Hallelujah. So that's a recipe. So now we understand what recipe is. Then what is prayer? Prayer is a spiritual device. Say with me, spiritual device. So prayer is a spiritual device. So don't think that all this prayer we are praying. Once you enter prayer, you have grabbed hold of a spiritual device. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they are not words. They are not carnal. They are not physical. They are not material. So prayer is a spiritual device and our primary communication link with God. Prayer is our primary communication link with God. And it is a spiritual device. Praise the name of the Lord. Another definition for prayer is Prayer is taking our life to God. Because when you take your life holistically to God, increase, it includes the good, the bad, the ugly of your life. It includes the ups and downs of your life. It includes the challenges of your life. It includes the high points of your life. It includes the joy of your life. It includes the sorrows of your life. So prayer is taking your life to God and bringing God's life into you. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is an interlaced, overlapping sphere. In prayer, you take your life to God and you bring God's life or God's essence or God's standpoint or God's view or God's perspective or God's, if you like, opinion into your life, into your world, into your realm, into your circumstances, into your situation, or whatever that is symbolical, indicative, or representative of your life. Are you with me so far? Amen. Then the third definition I wish to offer is that prayer means having a rapport with God, a tete-tete with God, a conversation with God. You know Abraham, in the case of Abraham, when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham said, mm, can I ask one question? God said, what if there are so, so many people here, will you destroy them? God said, I will not destroy them. Abraham said, mm, can I ask one more question? Praise the name of the Lord. He said, what is the question? What if there are so, so number of people, will you still destroy them? God said, no, if there are as many as that, I will not destroy them. Abraham scratched his head. He said, God, don't be upset. I just want to ask for this one last time. Praise the Lord. God said, go on, go on. He said, but what if you just find less than so, so, and so? God said, but if I find that much, I will not destroy them. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is a conversation. It's not a monologue. So prayer is a rapport. So now we understand what recipe is. We understand what prayer is. So follow me. What is it to be effective? Effective is to have the desired result. We had our one and our brother and our mother, daddy, who came here last Sunday. He told us about being effective. So we know what effective is. Effective is putting in something to get what you want to put out. What, what you want to get out. Effective is having results. Desirable results in its magnitude and its quality that you desire. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we, we combine all these elements that we have made definitions now. 
So I've told us that recipe is made up of subgroups, the ingredients, the instruction. So what then are the recipe for a faithful prayer? Follow me, be attentive. Don't let the devil distract you. You didn't come to church to play this morning. If you came to play, you could have played at home. The Bible in the book of Ecclesiastes says there yeah, is time for what? Everything. There yeah, is time for everything. Now, how you know the smartness of the devil is that when it's time to play, the devil does not suggest you should pray. Praise the name of the Lord. You will give yourself wholeheartedly to pray it, to play it. When it's time to watch World Cup, the devil does not suggest to you to do Bible reading. You will close your Bible, put it as far away from the television, and you'll be watching the World Cup 101%. Yes or no? But when it's time to listen to someone, when it's time to read your Bible, when it's time to pray, the devil will tell you to multitask. Praise the name of the Lord. He will tell you to multitask. That is when you will be looking for what is inside the child's nose to remove it. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is when you will be looking for your shoe to shine it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And church is only about two, two hours, three hours out of seven times 24 hours. And you want yourself to be shortchanged, to be cheated. I shall not be cheated in the mighty name of Jesus. I shall not be cheated in the name of Jesus. I shall not be cheated in the name of Jesus. We taught ourselves, I think it was in the Monday Bible study or so earlier in the week, that in most cases, when the devil wants to deal with a believer, he doesn't come with power. Why doesn't he come with power? Because the devil knows that greater is he that is in you than he himself who is in the world. So the devil always gets at us by cunning, smartness, deception. He doesn't come to you with power because he knows if he comes to you with power, there's a lion in you that will rise. So he doesn't come to you with power. The only people he deals with power are his captives, those he has captured with evil habits, those he has captured with unbelief, those he has captured with witchcraft. But if you're a child of God, not a captive of the devil, he can never come to you with power. He will come to you with lies, with subtlety. That's why when he came to Adam and Eve, he didn't come with power, because they would have cut off his head. In fact, one of the one of the demerits a witch can do to himself is to turn into a, an animal to come to you. Because if he came as a human being and you kill him, the police will arrest you for murder. Praise the name of the Lord. But if he comes like a snake, <laughs> you kill him now. You see that he's running because he didn't know. He has reduced his capability. You kill him. In fact, I will suggest you put him in a bag. Tie the bag. Don't even kill him. Just tie the bag and hang the bag in your garden and let the sun do the killing. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Or he comes like a rat and you're jumping up. A whole human being has reduced himself to a rat and you stay running. Praise the name of the Lord. He has limited himself by coming down like an animal. Praise the name of the Lord. That is, by the way, it's not in the script, but the Holy Spirit wants you to understand that. The devil does not come to you by power. He comes to you by truth, by lies, by deception, by logic, by intellectualism. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you are looking for the one of oh, you're not going to see him. You only do that when he has captured the Lord into the cage and closed the cage. Then you will see his uh, red eye. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So pay attention. We are now want to deal with the ingredients part of prayer before we do with the set instructions because we are talking about the recipe for effective prayer. What are the ingredients for prayer? Prayer must be from the heart. Say with me, from the heart. So when we call prayer point in the church and you're praying from your head, it means you don't have one ingredient. One ingredient is already missing. It's like somebody that wants to make a cup of tea and he doesn't have water. And when I was growing up in some country, I would say they don't usually have tap water. If there is no water in the house, you cannot make tea. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. No matter how much you want to drink tea, the ingredients is not complete. 
Hallelujah. Prayer must come from the heart. Let's quickly look at Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And we read, he says, And ye shall seek me, God is saying to us, Ye shall seek me, and ye shall find me. Condition for seeking and finding him. When ye search for me with all your heart. Ingredients for prayer is all your heart. So a heartless person cannot pray. A heartless person cannot pray. A heartless person cannot pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the prayer of a sinner is abomination to God. So even if a wicked person, a heartless person is somebody who is wicked, somebody who is vain, somebody who is a child of Belia or a son of Belia, somebody who is wicked, somebody who is too cunning for his own good or for the good of his society. A heartless person cannot pray because they lack that ingredient called heart. When you seek me with all your heart, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Another ingredient for prayer. Prayer must be offered in the name of Jesus. John, 1 John 5, 14 b. 1 John 5, 14 b. If you see it before me, please read. We want to make it of the time because we want to pray at the end of this uh, short sermon. 1 John Chapter 5, verse 14. The first John is the epistle according. No, not the epistle. Yeah, the epistle, not the gospel. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Prayer must be offered in the name of what? Amen. I don't know for you, sometimes I see people pray on television and they pray on public events. Let me quickly read the verses you guys are yet to get there. First John chapter 5, verse 14, B. Amen. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. First John chapter 5, verse 14. Amen. Hallelujah. Chapter 5, verse 14. Prayer must be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, when I watch television or when I see some people in public functions and they make prayers that does not end or include the name of Jesus, I pity them. I can see their struggle. They might be sincere. They might be well-intentioned. But they are missing the points. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Prayer must be done in the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus you know, is not just mounting it. If you are holding the name of Jesus illegitimately, it is as good as you don't have the name of Jesus. And to have the name of Jesus legitimately, to have it divinely and properly for your use, it must be that you are born again. Praise the name of the Lord. So to pray in the name of Jesus is not just saying in Jesus' name. Are you using that name legitimately? Are you using it reverentially? Are you using it as a portion to you? Or are you like the sons of Stephen who say, in the name of the Lord whom the poor preaches, come out. The devil say, eh, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you people? So you must legitimately have the name you want to use. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So to say pray in the name of Jesus, it's not just I said in Jesus' name. Uh, you say in Jesus' name, but you legitimately, is that name given to you? Or did you, did you need it? Or you overheard people using it and you think you, have, you can use it like the sons of Sceva. Another ingredient, number three. Prayer must be in line with the word of God. Prayer must be in line with the word of God. Sorry, I got my script mixed up. Um, prayer must be in the name of Jesus. We find that in John 16, verse 23. John Gospel, John Gospel, 16, 23. Amen. John Gospel, 16, 23. Hallelujah. It says there, And in that day ye shall ask 
me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Jesus says, whatsoever you shall ask God in my name, he will give it to you. Which means if you don't ask in Jesus' name, you are on your own. On your own means O-Y-O. May you never be on your own in the name of Jesus. It's not a good thing to be on your own, though, especially spiritually, because Jesus says, I will not leave you, nor forsake me, forsake you, even unto the end of time. So why are you child of God on your own? You cannot be on your own. Though. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You can be alone, but not on your own. You can be alone, but not lonely. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So that is the correct reference for in Jesus' name. The next one is that prayer must be in line with God's word. First, first John 5, 14, which we had looked at earlier on. First John 5, 14. Is anybody there? 5, 14 B. He says, and this is the confidence that we ask, we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, and the will of God is expressed in the scriptures. Now, there is a little confusion, and I'd like to highlight it here for our benefit. There is what is called can, C-A-N, can. And there is what is called will, W-I-L-L. Do not confuse what God can do with God, what God will do. Do you understand? What God can do is not exactly the same as God, what God will do. So in your prayer, your prayer must be aligned to what God will do, not necessarily what God can do. Praise the name of the Lord. What he will do is what is his will in the circumstance, in the situation with respect to you, etc. What he will do is what is his will. But what he can do lies within his omnipotence. He can do all things, but he's not necessarily going to do all things for you. He's not going to substitute King Charles and put you there. Praise the name of the Lord. Even though he can do it, but he will not do it. Do you understand? You understand now? That's why you need to marry your Bible. Say, marry your Bible. Amen. Marry your Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. Because if you marry your Bible, as the scripture says between husband and wife, he said, dwell with your wife with understanding. If you marry your Bible, then you will dwell with your Bible with what? Understanding. Thank you, my sister. You are following me. Amen. Amen. Number four ingredients is keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't complicate things. Keep it simple. Keep prayer simple. That's one of the unique attributes of man's of fire and miracles minister. Our Father and the Lord that you look at, he has broken it into a prayer point so that it is simple. Keep it simple. Prayer time is not the time to show that you have some kind of oratory. Oh, thou that liveth in the heaven above the planet, and that is good, is good, Lord God. No. If that is your word speaking, fine. Tell your Lord that be yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. Keep it simple. And the scriptural verse for that is 2 Corinthians 11 3. 2 Corinthians 11 3. Now, simple does not mean stupid. Simple does not mean naivety. naivety. Simple does not mean childishness. Simple means straightforward. Somebody has once said, don't describe, prescribe. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't describe your problem. Prescribe the solution you want. Tell God what you want. When you have mentioned the problem, move to what the solution is. And if you don't know the solution, then ask him to solve the, solution, the problem. Don't describe, prescribe. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So keep it. Don't complicate it. And simple doesn't mean stupid. It's like a straight line. A straight line is simple. 
I remember in the days I used to take, I was taking my egg. He came in mathematics subjective uh, questions. Those of you that did my egg, wave your hand. Amen. Mathematics. They say define a straight line. Define what a straight line. The definition of a straight line is the shortest line between two points. That's the definition of a straight line. The shortest line between two points. And if you understand that definition, if you draw, if I say draw lines now from that right, uh, to this place, everybody draw line. Now for me to know the straight line, I will take the distance of each line that is drawn. The shortest line is the straight line. Because a straight line is the shortest line between two points. Now that is simple. But if I give you a chalk now and say, draw a straight line for me on that board, you will find out that you will not, some of your lines will not be straight without a ruler. So what I'm saying is that simple does not mean stupid. So when we say keep your prayer simple, we are not saying make your prayer childish or make your prayer of nonsensical and all that. We are just saying keep it simple. Praise the name of the Lord. And the reference for that is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Another increment ingredient for prayer is it must be made in faith. Faith is an ingredient in prayer. Mark 11, 24. Quickly, Mark 11, 24. Amen. Mark 11, 24. Did you come to church with your Bible today? Amen. There's only one holy Bible, no holy food. Amen. No holy what? Food. You have holy Bible, but no holy Phone. So don't tell me that uh, you have the Bible app on your phone. Me too, I have the Bible app on my phone. In fact, I have more than half a thousand Bible apps on my phone. But I still carry my holy Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Amen. Mark 11. Are you here? Yes. Who shall read here? Yes, ma'am. So, prayer must have the ingredient of faith. Faith is believing. Believe that you shall have them. There is no point praying what you don't believe. Oh, God, kill the witch. And yet, you think uh, the witch is the strongest witch in my village. And you're praying you don't believe. Even if it's the strongest witch in your village, God can still kill him or kill her. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says God kill it and he make it alive. So it doesn't matter what, even if the, the witch is uh, the wizard of, uh, of Moscow, God can still kill the wizard of Moscow. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Not to mention the wizard of London. Every city has one wizard or the other. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So prayer must have the ingredient of faith. Another ingredient of prayer is it must be marinated in humility. That is, it must have humility. Luke 18, chapter. Luke 18, verses 9 to 14. Luke 18, verses 9 to 14. If you're writing, write it down. If you want to read, read. Luke 18, 9 to 14. Your prayer must be marked with humility. What is humility? Humility is being in a position and in an attitude that except God does this thing for me, I'm done for. Praise the name of the Lord. Except God does this thing for me, I am done for. That is your prayer. You have that humility. It means your prayer is so God-centered that there is no option other than that prayer to be answered. Other than that prayer that you are making. Amen. The seventh ingredient is perseverance, tenacity. You know the, the, the account of the unrighteous judge and that woman. The woman pestered the judge pestered. And there are two things that the Bible says of that judge that, mark, that, that we need to be focal about. He says, that judge does not fear man. One. 
and the judge does not fear God. In fact, may you never meet such people. Amen. May you never meet somebody that does not fear man and does not fear God. Because if you meet such person, the only option left for you is to kill the person. And if you are so wimpy, you are so sissy, you can't kill, then the person will kill you. Praise the name of the Lord. So those of you that don't like to shed blood, may you never meet that type of person. But if somebody that does not fear man, does not fear God, is standing in your way, the only option left to you is that, that, that. And you must pray to God seriously, not the one that you are saying that and you say, oh God, if you can save him, not save him. If you should have saved him, you should have saved him yesterday, but today, the time is up. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why sometimes in MFA, you hear some prayer. Your time is up, which means since you didn't get saved yesterday, bye bye, don't get saved again. Now it's that, 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 that. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people, their time have expired. Instead of you to say that, you're saying save. Their time has expired. What is expired is expired. The Bible says when the salt loses its best, there is no way to bring it back to salt. It is only fit to be thrown to the rubbish heap. Praise the name of God. So we are done with the ingredients. Now we want to go to how to arrange put the ingredients together, which is the set of instructions. And we want to do it in a way that will be fast and quick, so we keep to our time. Unfortunately, we are time constrained. So to recap, ingredients of prayer, it must be from the heart, it must be offered in the, in the name of Jesus, it must be in line with the word of God, it must be kept simple, it must be made in faith, it must be made in humility, it must be made with perseverance, which is tenacity. Pray until something happens must be an ingredient. It's like somebody who is cooking beans, and there are different types of beans. I don't know for you, some of you didn't grow up in some countries, so you wouldn't know. There is some beans that you have to cook it overnight, yes or no, ma'am? Yes. They call it akedi. I don't know whether you know it in your language. Now, if you are not tenacious in cooking that beans, you will not cook it to the door. You will give up somewhere. That beans, they will cook it in firewood finish, they will go and bring firewood to continue cooking it until the beans is done. It's not this type of beans you see, it's not the other. In my language, they call it Akede. Praise the name of the Lord. So some prayers can be like that. You have to stay until the prayer done. Praise the name of the Lord. You know the prayer of Daniel? He stayed 21 days until the prayer done. Not the one who cook his phone, he vomit, he says it's microwave, way, way. It is not done. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is not done. May you not cook or eat on or on food. In the name of Jesus. So now we are on to the instructions, and this one you should get. The instruction for prayer, or the instruction aspect of recipe of prayer, effective prayer, is captured in the acronym. Action. Say with me, action. Yes, sister, uh, don't. How do you spell action, man? Quick, quick, quick. How do you spell action? I can't hear you from here. Praise the name of the Lord. That is for the benefit of the adults in case they are busy. So, action is A C. I O N. Act what? Pay attention. The A stands for adoration. The A stands for adoration. So if you are to mix the ingredients of your effective prayer, you must follow these instructions. Adoration. Your prayer must have what? Adoration. Adoration is to worship God as He is, for whom He is, not for what He does, for whom He is. And some of us don't understand it when we watch Power Must Change and I watch other programs that our Father and the Lord does. Once he comes up to the pulpit, what does he first do? Praise and worship now. Praise the name of the Lord. You think he just did it like that? When that man of God came here yesterday and uh, last Sunday, what did he do? Adoration. 
Worship God for who he is. He said, but who is God? I will tell you how to know God, how God is. To know how who God is, is via your scripture, via the Bible. To know how who God is, is by personal experience and encounters. To know who God is, is by revelation. To know who God is, is by the observance of all things which are created that speak so magnificently of him. Now the shortcut, say with me shortcut. The shortcut to knowing who God is, is to know his names. Because his names, they are not nouns. They are descriptive of him. Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Mekendis to me. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you Google it and you know all the names of God and you know what they talk about, then you will know me. You say, when we are making a confession from Psalm 91, what did he say? He said, because he has known my words, my name. So when you know God's name, you will know who he is. Because his names, they, they are not now. His name is not uh, Peter, John. See, all those things are now. The names of God are not now. They are descriptive of him. Every of his name. When Moses said to God in the burning bush, when he said, go to Egypt, Moses said, whom shall I tell him sent me? What the, 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 the language of Moses? Moses didn't say, What is the name of the head? He said, Who shall I tell them? Sent me. God says, Tell them, I am that I am. So that I am that I am is who God is. Is who God is. So who God is, is revealed in his names. So if you are not come, and we have thought about this in some of our sermons, I think maybe early last year or early this year, about the names of God. There are also the names of Jesus. There are also the names of the Holy Spirit. Each of them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they have their set of names. And in some cases, their names also overlap because I am that I am is the name of the Father. It's also a name that Jesus took to himself when he was speaking to people. So it's also we know that this is his name. That's why he says, I am my Father, we are one. So they have names that they share. Praise the name of the Lord. But they are still distinct. Hallelujah. So, prayer action A is for adoration. C is for confession. C is for confession. C is what? For confession. Where you confess your heart, express your heart of pertinence for wrongs done or for wrongdoings. It can be your own wrongdoing. It can be the wrongdoing of somebody you're concerned about. It can be the wrongdoing of our generation and of our community. It can be the wrongdoing of the uh, United Kingdom. United Kingdom is so, 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 so Bible illiterate that it pinches. Praise the name of the Lord. I was discussing with somebody Sunday. I said, we call this place white man country. In the realm of this spirit, this place is darker than Nigeria. Amen. This place is darker than Ogomosho. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It's even darker than our Kwete. Amen. Amen. So don't be deceived by all the brightness you see. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So confession is seen. Confession is seen. Action T is for thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for your salvation. It can be an attitude you can also express this in word within the context of your prayer, within the duration of your prayer, within the session of your prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Thanksgiving for your salvation. Thanksgiving for God's forgiveness of your sins. Thanksgiving for God's blessings. In fact, there are things that come to my mind that happened maybe 10, 15 years ago. I still thank God about it. Because when I look now with hindsight, if those things had not happened, I would have followed another course that would have taken me far away from where God wants me to be. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanksgiving. Another one, the I stands for entreat. This is where we measure and we leave other instructions out. And it's to our daily man. That's why some of us don't have effective prayer. Yes, we can pray 70 hours. There are some people that pray 70 hours. 
they don't have effective prayer life. So it's not about hours. In fact, in the action, you will not see edge. So nothing there about that, hours. Praise the name of the Lord. Entreat means to ask. Entreat means to plead. Entreat means to beseech God. Entreat means to grow. Entreat means to argue. Abraham was arguing with God. What if there are two people? What if there are five people? What if there are three people? Praise the name of the Lord. God says, bring your arguments. Let us reason together. Come with your argument. I don't, I don't give back to stupid children. I want you to come with all your, with your, all your mental, spiritual mental faculties intact. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I is for entreat. O is for obedience. What does it mean in the context of prayer? Obedience is deferring to the will of God. Jesus says, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus' desire was, if it be possible, let this cup pass over me. But nonetheless, not my will, but your will be done. That is obedience. You can't come to the place of prayer with no obedience. You want to turn the prayer into a monologue. You are giving God instruction. You are making demands. And then he wants to use that opportunity of prayer to remind you something you need to correct. He said, not now, not now. Not now. We are not, not now. It's me that call you, not you. It's like phone. Some people, you call them on phone. They want to call you. Say, it's me that call you. So hold on, let me talk while I call you. Praise the name of the Lord. So you don't come to God with prayer and you say, hey, God, it's me that call you. So you hold on, let me finish. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So O is for obedience. Then N, remember action. N is for negation. Say with me, negation. N is for negation. Negation means binding and casting, uprooting and annulling. Negation is warfare. So that is the negation point is when you say, ah no, there's too much salt in this uh, recipe. I remove the salt. There's too much pepper in my life. My life is not a pepper, pepper yard. Any power that wants to turn the vineyard of my life to pepper, I come against you. The Bible says, whatsoever you decree on earth is as decree in heaven. So negation is when you make decree. You use your knowledge of the scriptures. You use your knowledge of the will of God. You use your aspiration for the kingdom of God to come. You use your dedicated power in the name of Christ. You begin to negate. No, devil is enough for you. I'm not having this one. I can't see it. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, arise. Let the troublers of my Israel. Let them begin to trouble. That is when you do negation. Everything you don't want, everything that is not proper, you say, no, I refuse. This one is not happening, not on my watch. So we have talk, covered what? Action. A is for what? Acceleration. C is for what? Confession. T is for what? I is for what? O is for what? N is for what? Negation. I did not see this thing in any magazine or textbook. I received it in the time of preparing this sermon. And if I received it of the Lord, it means it is meant for you because I'm only a messenger. I deliver what I've been asked to deliver to you. So do not take it lightly. Praise the name of the Lord. Benefits of prayer as we round up. One of the benefits of prayer is that our requests are answered and we are glad. Our requests are answered, we are glad. Our sonship in Christ is enhanced. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. One of the benefits of effective prayer is that it is an arsenal for victorious warfare. Second Corinthians 10 verses 3 to 5. Benefits of prayer, it gives us supernatural empowerment. Luke chapter 11 verses 1 to 13. Benefits of effective prayer, it makes for godliness in our character and it makes us to be more benevolent to others. Benefits of effective prayer, it changes our priorities and makes them heaven work. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Benefits of effective prayer, 
He brings us into God's affairs and brings God's kingdom amongst us. Benefits of effective prayer, anything and everything according to the will of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So what will Christianity be without prayer? Christianity without prayer is dead in the waters. A prayerless Christianity is a powerless Christianity. The difference between the Christianity of this era and the Christianity of the past of Apostle is the differential, the delta in our prayerfulness. Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 9, verse 29. What are the rewards of prayerfulness? Romans 3, 19. The Bible says the earnest expectation of the creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Prayerfulness makes for us to manifest as sons of God. So how then can we become effective? Or what do we do to be prayerful? Number one, in no particular order, surround yourself with Bible-believing, prayerful Christians. Surround yourself, whether on Facebook, WhatsApp, Telegram, whatever social media you are in, physically, online, electronically, surround yourself. Surround yourself with Bible-believing, prayerful Christians. Another way, what we must do to become prayerful, Make the needful sacrifice. The saying goes, no pain, no gain. Prayer is work, it's not leisure. It's work, it's not leisure. So you make the needful sacrifice. No pain, no gain. Avail yourself of the many prayer programs we have put in place in this church. Mountain of Fire, Miracles Ministry, Italian Center, UK Spa. We have 52 prayer vigils in a year, every Wednesday, 52. We have 12 push programs at the eve of every power must change hands. 52 plus 12, 64. Next year, we are going to have additionally one deliverance prayer vigil every month. That's 64 plus 12, how much in how many now? 76, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Then there's power must change hand. Prayers. There's prayer feast on Sundays. You begin to add it. So we have over 100 corporate prayer occasions and events in this church. Avail yourself of it. Avail yourself of it. Avail yourself of it. In fact, many days, many years ago, I used to witness, you know, go to do evangelism. And one of the reasons why I do evangelism back then is that I do not want anybody's blood on my hands. Book of Ezekiel. The Bible says, I've made you a watchman. If you see danger coming and you do not blow the prophet, the trumpet, the danger will kill them and will repair the blood from your hands. But if you blow the trumpet and they refuse to hit and the thing came and killed them, they will die that you will be free. Praise the name of the Lord. So all these prayer things that we are packaging in this church is that anybody that says, hey, we are not praying in this church like other MFM, your sin will be upon your head. Praise the name of the Lord. We are praying you just you refuse to open your eyes that we are praying. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And we will not use prayer to suffocate other programs that we ought to do, like sharing the word, like evangelism, like enjoying one another's company, which is called fellowship. We will not use prayer to suffocate them. But we will pray the more and we will continue to pray the more because you cannot over pray. You can only under pray. So you're asking what can I do to be prayerful? Avail yourself of these arrangements. Amen. Bother one another with prayers. We read it from the scriptures. Bother one another with prayers. Bother the pastor with prayers. Bother the members with prayers. Don't fool me and be telling uh, uh, Prince Charles says uh, to Camilla, uh, we go and eat at uh, Washington DC. Wait till comes and we go and eat. If they like, they can go and eat in McDonald's. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 
MFM is one of the churches with the highest collection of prayer points. And as pastors and branch, whatever, we are giving some access to those prayer points that you cannot find in print, that you cannot find to buy, because they are not for sale. They are not over the counter medications. We administer those prayer points when you approach us and we relate to you and we cancel you and we understand where you're coming from before we give you those prayer points. It's like medication. You can go and buy your profit in a Tesco. Praise the name of the Lord. But there are medications you can't buy in Tesco. You can't even buy it online. They will ask you GP prescription. Praise the name of the Lord. So there are prayer points. If you are just Googling and then looking in YouTube, there are MFM prayer points. You will not see them in YouTube. You will only get them when you approach a pastor, whether the one here or the one in the MFM branch. That's when you will get it. Praise the name of the Lord. So bother the pastor, bother one another about prayer issues. They are all in place for our edification and for our help. The last but not the least, and this is not exhaustive, is what I've called wake up and smell the coffee. Wake up and what? And if you don't like coffee, smell the snow or smell the floor, or smell the mama put that is cooking in the kitchen. Praise the name of the Lord. Smell whatever you want to smell. They wake up and smell the coffee. And we see the scripture for that is in Hebrews 5.12. That's what I will conclude with as we pray the few prayers that we have to pray. Hebrews 5.12. Wake up and do what? Praise the name of the Lord. Hebrews 5.12. Wake up and smell the coffee. Sister Fula, are you there? Read it for us. Hebrews. Hebrews, sorry, Hebrews 5, verse 12. Hebrews 5, verse 12. For when the time he ought to be teachers, he have. Hebrews 5, 12. Hebrews 5, 12, yes. For when the time he ought to be teachers, he have things that want to teach you again, to be switch again, to be the first principles of the oracles of God. And have become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Praise the name of the Lord. Seven Hebrews 5 12 says, From when you and I ought to be teachers, ought to be prayer warriors, ought to be faithful prayers, ought to understand the ingredients of prayers, ought to know the set instructions for making effective prayers, it is sad. It is disheartening that we are still needing to be taught. The first principles, we are still needing to be cajoled, to be petted, to be stroked, to be, eh, are you coming? We have started the prayer now. Are you coming? Are you, are you coming to pray for me? Are you coming to pray for me? They are begging you to come and take medicine to cure yourself. And they are pleading with you as if you are baby John or baby Grace or brother Jeremiah. Pastor is said, the pastor is said, the pastor is said. Praise the name of the Lord. Because send him here to come and examine the pastor. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, with the first principles of the oracles of God, and he have become such as have need of me and not of strong me. To have need of me means you need petting. You need petting. Oh, bro. Bro, come now. Bro, bro, come now. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. On that note, Hallelujah. In fact, if you offended, it's good. The Bible says somewhere that offense is uh, good. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's stand up as we take these few prayers. We are running for time. Oh God, arise. Manifest your fatherhood over my life and give me a sense of sonship. In the name of Jesus, so Lord, my Father, manifest your fatherhood over our lives and give us a sense of sonship. In the name of Jesus, 